Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to the second episode of the 2D platformer tutorial here in Unity, where we're going to make ourselves a little simple platformer game, and it's all going to be fun. So yes, this episode, um, we want to stop our character being able to jump miles up in the air, but we also want to give our character the ability to double jump. And there's a few other little bits and pieces we're going to do here first. So, what we want is, at the moment, when we start our game here, starts up, there we go, uh, Characters is moving around, but we can just like jump off the side of the screen. That's not really what we want. We want the camera to follow the player, and there's ways to do this in the script through scripting, which we'll probably look at further down the line. But for the moment, there's a much simpler way to do it, which is just you click on your main camera here and just drag it on top of the player, and then it becomes a child of the player. So what you can do then is if you zoom out here, you see this is the center of the camera, and we want to move that just on top of the player there. So you can either move it on top of the player like that, or if you go over here and put zero in there, zero in there, and you can leave the other thing at minus 10, that doesn't matter. Uh, but now we have the camera will center on our player, and if we hit play, here we go, look, the camera follows the player, nice and simple, nice and handy, and no matter how high we go jumping in the air, it'll still follow us, which is perfect. But also, as we look at the camera here, we can see like it looks kind of confusing with the light blue ground and the dark blue background. So we want to change the color of the background here to make everything stand out a little bit more. So if we click on this blue area here where it says background, if we click on that, we get a color selector. So we can jump around whatever crazy colors we want and slide this thing up and down. We can make it absolutely white or like super colorful. But what we want to do is just make it nice and black. So everything kind of stands out a little bit better. If we hit play again, see... Yeah, look, everything looks, it just makes everything stand out a little bit nicer. So there we go. There are a couple of little things just to make the game look a tiny bit better. But now we're going to go on to the main business. We want to make our player, first of all, we want the player to know when he's on the ground so that we can't jump miles up in the air, which is no use to anybody. So to do that, we're going to have to go into our script. So if we go into our scripts folder over here, double click on player controller and give it a second. It should open up. Here we go. So, how do you make sure that your player is on the ground? Well, there's different ways to do it. There's, you can use, th use things called raycasts, which other people use, but my most interesting way that I find useful anyway is just basically to do a system that like does it creates a tiny little circle that you don't see or anything like that. It just creates a little circle and it detects if the player is in the ground or is, is touching the ground, basically. So, to do that, we'll create a few little variables here, and I'll explain them as we go along. So, public transform uh, we call this ground check so a transform is just like a point in space basically or an object with like that has a location that has a ro has a rotation and um, we're going to create that within unity itself and I'll show you how to sort it out when we get to that point but for now just it's it's a point in space basically uh, then we we'll create a public float uh, ground check radius and that'll be to determine uh, how close you need to how, how big the circle you make needs to be to determine if you're on the ground it'll be very small but it's just handy to have it in case you want to do something weird down the line then we're going to do public layer mask what is ground and a layer mask um is something we'll come back to in a little bit it'll be easier to explain within unity itself uh, and then we're going to go private bool grounded. Now a boolean, a bool is, is also known as a boolean, which is basically it can either be true or false, and that's it. So grounded, it can, he can either be true that he's on the ground or false, he's in the air somewhere, who knows. Uh, and we make it private because we don't want to be able to adjust it from anywhere else. We only want this, scre this script to be able to decide whether the player is grounded or not. So... Now we need to add the thing that works out whether you're on the ground or up in the air or floating on the moon. Who knows where you are? So rather than having it within the start function, which happens like only the very first time you start using this, this little bit of script, or the update function, which happens every every time the frame every time the picture on the screen is updated, it ha it happens within this update function here. What we want is a thing called void fixed update and two little curly things like that 
and two little curly brackets like that and fixed update occurs a set amount of time every second i think by default is like 0.1 or something something in that range anyway so you know it's going to happen a certain amount of times every single second and that's when you want to do physics stuff in unity this is usually where you want to do it within um so what we're going to do here is if physics 2d which is just a sim uh, a system within unity overlap circle so what this will do is like this will create a little uh, a circle thing and it'll return true or false basically actually I was going to do this if statement but that doesn't make any sense what we should do is just set grounded is equal to physics physics 2d dot overlap circle so rather than having it be if this thing is true then grounded is true or if this thing is false then grounded is false we just set automatically grounded is equal to whether this thing is true or not so what we'll do here is we have we have our transform up here which is ground check so we want to put that in here ground check and then we need a radius value which is up here we have ground check radius so we'll type in ground check radius and then finally we have this little layer mask thing here which is this one here which is what is ground so what is ground bam and there you go now it knows whether it's on the ground or not and just to test that out we can go back into unity here we click on player um oh we got an error here why is this saying error 2038 okay i was just being a little bit silly so when we said that this was a transform point this ground check up here we said that it has a position and it has a rotation and for using the physics 2d that overlap circle what we want is the position of this transform so what we do is ground check dot position so now we hit save go back in here and when this finishes compiling in the corner hopefully everything should disappear yep yeah, that's okay we don't need to worry about the fact it's not being used just yet so we're going to try and determine whether the whether it's checking properly that he's on the ground so what we need to do is click on our player here then if we go game object create empty child and we'll just click on this again to rename it to uh we'll just call it ground check just so it's nice and simple so then we click on our player back here again if we scroll down to our script there's a space here that says ground check and it says none transform we grab this thing click on this and drag it over to none transform and now that this new object that we created is linked here but we have to check where this object is so if we zoom in on this guy and we want to click on ground check here and move this downward so does add his feet so that you know obviously you need to check if your feet are on the ground so we move that down to the bottom of the player and way to make this visible so that we can always see where it is as well if we click on this box here and we click on say say yellow this little yellow circle now we can see even if we zoom out or anything we can see that little box there or box that's the circle there so now because we made that variable private we can't see anything here oh actually no before we go on to that we're going to set our radius to 0.1 just because i know that works and then we have to worry about what what the ground is looking for so yeah and you can set that to like different layers here within unity and i'll just go through this now because well, we want to create a new layer for the ground so if you click layers here you'll see there's a, an assortment of different layers that are kind of default ones for unity and click on edit layers here and in user layer 8 we'll type in ground um, and we'll also create a player one just so it might come in handy in the future uh, so then we go back over here and click on ground click on the first ground and hold shift and then click on the last one so we have them all selected and then go over here to layer and select ground so now every one of these objects is assigned to the ground layer and then we go back to our player 
go down to here and for what is ground we'll click ground there and now like I was saying the we set that bool to be private because we don't need to be able to interact with it while we're playing the game or anything like that but we want to be able to see what it is now while we're doing this so if you click on there's three little lines in the top corner here with an arrow beside it if you click on that and click on debug and we scroll back down see now we can see the grounded variable here we can't interact with it we can't do anything to it but it's just we can see it so if we hit play and now we can see the characters on the ground and look there's a little check mark that means it's true and that means it's on the ground we jump it goes off he comes back down he's on the ground so perfect we know that's working so now we go oh, no that's the wrong thing <laughs> so now we go back in here so now we know that the ground thing is working and at this point here where we're checking for the space bar being pressed we're going to add another little check here to make sure that the player is on the ground so now we type ampersand twice and just grounded so basically what that does is it checks that you're inputting the key the space button and also it checks that you're on the ground and now we hit save control nest to save go back to the game press play once it's finished compiling down here now if we jump we can only jump on the ground if we press it a lot of times no more jumping madly up into space which isn't something that we want to happen in the game really um, and there you go but we can't get up onto this platform here look we're stuck we can't it's really hard to reach up we can't go oh, oh can't quite make it so what we need is a double jump every good platformer needs a double jump really so double jump is relatively easy to actually put into the game um, it basically only depends on like one variable so to do this we're going to go um, another private bool and uh, we're going to call this double jump no double capital J jumped uh, it's always kind of a standard of when you're writing code and um, for variables that the very first letter of the variable you make a small letter and then if it goes on to another word you make the first letter of that word a capital letter so here you have double jumped what is ground ground check radius it just makes it much easier to read or else it's just like a jumble of letters and nobody really knows what's going on uh, so we got our private bool jumped what we're going to do is we're going to create another input here we're going to copy this little bit down to there and we'll just create some curly brackets some open and close ones and close that there and we're going to copy this bit of code and put that in there so now what we want to do is we have a double jump variable so he'll be able to double jump if he's not already grounded or if he's not already double jumped so if he hasn't double jumped so not double jumped then he'll able to jump again but we don't want this to happen just when he's on, on the ground as well so not double jumped and also he's not grounded so now when he's not double jump and he's not on the ground then he should be in the air but what's determining whether he's double jumped or not so basically we're going to add another little if if grounded close that bracket and now we're only doing one line of code here uh, much like we have done other places but just to show this so rather than having to open and close little curly brackets if you're only doing one line of code after an if statement then you can just you only have to put it in here you don't have to create these little curly brackets it kind of just saves a little bit of time on typing uh, so if grounded if he's on the ground then double jumped is equal to true no sorry double jumped is equal to false because he hasn't double jumped because he's on the ground yeah so that makes sense and then when you're when you have double jumped we want to set double jumped is equal to true so there we go we save that we pop back into the game hit the play button once it's all compiled here we go double jump look you got a double jump you can only jump once you can't jump madly in the air or anything so look we got a double jump now we can get up onto this platform absolutely perfect just what we wanted uh, it's nice and simple like I said it's it's only one little variable and then a couple of lines of extra code but 
one thing that we've got going on here now that you don't really want to have when you're writing lots and lots and lots of code. We've got two lines of code here that are the exact same. And that's fine, I mean it's only two two little lines that are the exact same, but imagine if you've got like a little segment of code that's like 20 lines long, but you want to do it in the same place and different times. You don't want to keep putting in like 20 lines of code over and over and over again. And you got like you end up with like a hundred or something extra lines of code that you don't need. So what we're going to do instead is after void update, so after this curly bracket here, we're going to space that down. So before this last one, we don't want to go outside that. What we're going to type is, uh, we'll make this public void jump. And we'll open our curly brackets and close them again, same as before. And what we'll do is we'll take this bit of code here, pop that in there, and then, now this little section will be what determines how the player is jumping. So we don't need this whole bit anymore. Uh, so rather than having to like uh, just delete it all, if we put two slashes like that, and the same here, then that gets rid of that. It doesn't get handled by the system at all, like so you don't have to worry about it. And instead we're going to type here, jump, then two little brackets, and our little colons at the end that you always have to put in. It's always important. Those are one of the most common mistakes that I make anyway, certainly, is forgetting to put them in at the very end of the sentence, or each line. And there you go. So now it, what it does is it calls this jump code. Again, it's only one line of, of um, code. It doesn't really save that much space. But imagine if this was 20 lines long. You could replace all of it into here and just replace it with one little bit saying, do this, whatever it is. So we'll hit save, go back to the game, hit play. And perfect, it all works perfectly fine. So there you go, that's how to add double jumps to the game, uh, how to check that your player is on the ground, which is always very important. Uh, and next time we will continue with more uh, fun and adventures in 2D platformness. So if you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. Uh, share it around if you know people who are like interested in learning how to make a game tell them hey look here's some video for you to watch but most importantly come back soon for the next episode woo